Good evening, good evening, people. So if you're coming on, uh, got a wee, a wee special surprise. We brought another chair up. Wonder why, eh? Wonder why I've got another chair. Hi, Fiona. So, uh, sorry guys, been quite busy and uh, been doing a lot of running around in the last couple of hours. Uh, we had to attend a wee emergency. So because we've had the wee emergency, the uh we've got a guest tonight and i was going to do a side by side guest but the guest actually is in my house so we said to that guest you may as well stay for the live here and it will save you going home and tuning in how you doing adam so uh as i said guys uh we surprise tonight hi susie so we've got a wee guest here as i said uh that's why the other chair's there behind me, uh, and we'll call our guest up in a second once we get into it. But hey ho, <coughs> that's what happens. Adam, uh, the setter went to Leeds, the English setter, so you know mate, that's what happened with that. So, uh, Jane Bettles, Jane Bettles, where are you from then Jane? Where are you from? Guys, I'm just tidying bits and pieces up. If that's my guest coming up the stairs, they better not come in just yet. Because we'll know into the first five minutes. And you don't know who it is. So uh, anyway, they're, they're here. By default. Don't know how they ended up here. Essex. Oh, Essex, no problem. What are you doing up here? You're not allowed in here yet. <laughs> so anyway, as I said, we've had the... We've had a busy couple of hours, we'll have another surprise next week, but the wee surprise that we've got this week is standing in my doorway at the moment. We didn't think this person would be here tonight, but hey oh, they were going to go home and watch their live from their own home, but we thought, you know what, you're here, you may as well do it. Hi Jim, how are you doing? So, uh, Jim, renewing my contract next Tuesday at the uh, Paradiso. I've got a wee appointment with Moira at 11.40 sign the, sign the programme or oh, sign the contract so I'll get that to renew next week mate so I hope you're well up there at Lennox too so guys 3.15 got a few bits to talk about uh, please bring your questions to the table we'll cover some bits and pieces and as I said I've got a chair here so uh, we'll wait get one and a half minutes to wait and then you can come in <laughs> So, uh, as I said, we've been quite busy the last couple of hours. We had a wee emergency to attend. Hi, Karen. And uh, this person helped me with the emergency. And uh, what the hell is that? Who's chewing? Oh, well, it's him that's chewing that bone. That's fine. Give me the bone. I thought my doorway was getting wrecked. So, <laughs> not that they ever do that, but I was like, what the hell's going on there? Uh, Rico is chewing away on a bone. It sounds like he's just told Uber off. Uh, good man, hope to see you next scene. Yeah, you will, Jim, you will. Uh, at some stage, mate. Right, guys, so we're about 30 seconds to go before the five minute starts. Uh, we've got quite a few people coming into the room. We've got a guest about to come into the real room. Uh, this guest should have went home. They've ended up staying here at ours for dinner. So we had to take them to the pizza place and feed them and uh, their chair is beside me so without further ado I don without further ado tonight people there will be two of us now we were supposed to be side by side tonight on the screen but we're going to be side by side in my office because this person helped me out earlier on so without further ado, Angela, come in and sit down. <laughs> She's been downstairs with Anne eating pizza. Uh, so say hi to the guests. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so uh, myself and Angela had a wee emergency to attend earlier on. And uh, hold on, what's going on here? That's better, isn't it? That's much better. <laughs> right, okay. 
So, uh, yeah, myself and Angela had a wee uh, emergency to attend, so she's ended up staying here just now. She's had dinner with us, and uh, she helped us out earlier on with the emergency that we had to go and deal with. So, Jane, hi, Angela. Right, guys, hi, hi. Right, so I'm going to sit back here. So, guys, uh, let's talk about some of the stuff we've done this week. So, <clears throat> those of you know, Sam, so <laughs> just about a question, Sam. So, uh, Sam, that we went down to that emergency you know about earlier on. Uh, we're not going to talk about it this week because we're going to save it for next week because uh, it's settling in at the moment, if that makes sense. Uh, but uh, this week, as you're aware, last weekend, that's the rain one again, look at that. Yeah. I shouldn't have, uh, so this week, or last weekend, we were at Samantha's up in the Highlands. We went and did the man trail and go. <laughs> hey. And there's my first step. <laughs> Hi, Lewis. <laughs> so, Angela's, is she a fiance? No. Not yet? Not yet. Lewis, hurry up, please. <laughs> so, uh, Lewis, uh, who's Angela's other half, he's at home. Uh, he knows. Focus, 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 yeah, focus, <laughs> right. So, Rico. Fuck off, go. Right, so we've got the dogs here now. Uh, so we were, at, uh, we were at Samantha's at the weekend, great weekend of man trailing. In the end, we ended up with 20 dogs, I think it was. 20 dogs. Steady, Lou said steady. <laughs> so I'll just get the question done, mate. My wife needs a new hat. Uh, so we went to Samantha's up in the Highland, great weekend. Samantha sourced us a great location for Man Trailing UK uh, and we ended up with 20 dogs. We, we were only supposed to have, I think it was 18, we ended up with 20 because Sam put two dogs into the mix and then her friend uh, Tez brought their 13 year old deaf husky, yep, deaf husky who we put on to the Man Trailing and uh, the dog absolutely nailed it. So it just goes to show you that uh, the first sense in the dog is the nose, obviously a deaf husky, we put it onto the trail and it found the person. So as I said, Sam found us a great location, we were up there, I went up on the Friday, I'm going to take this watch off, because look what happens. <laughs> I've got my watch on and as I move it, it creates a shadow on the wall and I've got a Rottweiler gone. Where's that shadow gone? Okay. So, Samantha sources a great location, we had... Uh, we had an abandoned car. Some of you seen the seven-month-old Mali searching that. We had uh, old barns, derelict barns with old uh, bits and pieces in it. We had old skips lying about where we were hiding people under blankets and stuff near this the skip. And we had barns, as I said, and sheds. And there was a bit of forestry nearby as well. So absolutely fantastic location. So uh the, the guys that were in partnership with at uh, Blaze, Angela and Seamus, they're putting some posters together. And those guys are going to be publishing the next man trailing course, guys, for the intro. The introduction course is going to be, I will tell you now. Uh, there's my notes, there's my notes there. So the next man trailing course is going to be Saturday the 18th and Sunday the 19th of June 2022 there'll be room for 24 dogs six dogs on the Saturday morning six dogs on the Saturday afternoon six dogs Sunday morning six dogs sa Sunday afternoon and that will be held at Livingston so for those that are interested our next man trailing introduction course will be in Livingston we are doing a man trailing session that's for those that have completed the introduction course at Cumbri next Sunday. That's our next one, which is a session for people who have completed the course. They'll be doing line handling, sniff commands, and we'll be throwing a couple of searches in for them. So Karen is here and she's going on it. And uh, let's see who else is here that might be on that course. Uh, da, 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 none of them. So I just noticed Fiona, you're on here, Fiona Alexander. We will be publishing the dates for the one in Denny. However, if you're able, you can come to the one in Livingston if you wish. And I said that's the 18th and 19th of June. The one in Denny, we check the dates for that and the people who own the land. Because they are going to, I think it's, uh, they're, they're going to Aberdeen to a horse show. And all their equipment's all over the place at the moment. So they can't give us that land at the moment because there's just horses and kit everywhere. I'll just... 
we just checked and I'm working so can't make Livingston sadly so the following weekend Fiona we may be doing another Livingston one on the following weekend depending how many people we get and on top of that if it's not there we might be doing it in Airdrie I've yet to wait for a location because mm. that's the other one right yep. that we're going to talk about uh, so we might have another location set up in Airdrie uh, we're just waiting for the go ahead on it and uh, that will be quite uh, or that weekend too do you ever have any weekends <laughs> off? what I might do guys is I might do a introduction course of one evening because it's well allegedly summer mm. we've just looked out the window the skies are great and it's pissing down well it's that sort of smirry rain isn't it yeah, apparently smirry rain gets you wetter right right i got soaked today <laughs> right so smirry rain outside so fiona we might look at putting one on one evening because it's only three hours and given the fact that it's it's light so mm. we could start one at 6 p.m at night and finish that at nine and it'll still be daylight but even if it got a bit darker later on, it doesn't really cause any problems because dogs are using their nose. Uh, let's have a look at the one I was talking about. Let's look at that. Uh, Uber. All right, he's got one, that bone. Uh, okay, the Denny one, guys, is the 16th and 17th of July. 16th and 17th of July. We will post that one. That's the man trailing event. Uh, just make a note of that in your diaries if you're interested. 16, 16 and 17th of July. I'm a night shift worker. <laughs> Listen, Fiona, <laughs> let's have a chat. <laughs> We're offering you a, an evening. Now you're saying you're a night shift worker. We're offering you a weekend. <laughs> you work in July as well. Lads, what we might do, lads and lasses, what we might do, because it's Fiona, <laughs> what we might do is... We'll organise one round Fiona's working pattern. Mental, innit? That's going all right. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Fiona, do us a favour. Send me weekends you have off. We can find a location. That's easy enough. And uh, we'll look at setting one up. It doesn't matter. We can set one up anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as we have a location. I mean, we did one. We had a gazebo because it was a bit sunny and stuff at the weekend but we can set a, an intro workshop up on any land that we've got access to oh we're looking at palace red country park oh that'd be good yeah palace red yeah, country palace park red so fiona i'll tell yeah, you what give me some dates and i will do one at palace red and come along mm. because we're already looking at land up there the weekend before july she's off i'm off the weekend before in july oh, in july before july so what's the dates if you want to let me know the exact dates please and we'll look at it because we've got a couple of uh i've got a couple of instructor workshops in there yeah but that's fourth and five hold on i'm assuming mm -hmm. that might be that one the 25th and 26th of what june june I think it's fiona just i will travel come on come <laughs> on all to your place you're in bloody she's only she? in falkirk aren't you I yeah, she's only doing the road for you. 11th and 12th of July. July. Okay. Oh, 12th of July. I'll be Better away. watch us any of the funny flute people about <laughs> <laughs> playing drums and all that. <laughs> right, so, uh, right, I'll tell you what, Fiona. Shit, sorry, hold <laughs> on. Okay. We'll work it out. Right. You give us dates and we'll look at it. Okay, so, guys, uh, the man trailing course, yeah, so I'm just thinking, let me look at the photograph here because. No, it's all right. It? So we had, not sure, but it will be suitable for man trailing. Julie, any dog is suitable for man trailing. You'd be surprised, actually. Uh, 9th and 10th of June. When the fuck is that? Hold on. That's, that's, 9th and 10th of June is Thursday and Friday. July, you enough. she might mean. Do you mean July? July. I'm not too sure what we <laughs> <laughs> Confused. Is it, it's easy to confuse a woman, isn't it? Hey. <laughs> right, so, uh, Julie, uh, man, good evening, Michael and Andrew, yeah. Uh, hi, Kim. Yeah, <laughs> Anne's downstairs, by the way, because she and Angela were eating the pizza before I got back to the table. Uh, so, right, Fiona, 
message me. I've lost the plot. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'd guess that. So just send us some dates over, Fiona, and we'll have a look at it, right? Because we can fit the man trailing events in basically anywhere that we, we find that be suitable. Well, that was for Crunch Park because that. that's not been used anymore. Uh, and Angela and Seamus were up there the other day and they said the old building where all the animals the stuff where there's no animals up there anymore. There you go. Uh, there's nobody in the building, so we could set it up that's there, that's really fine. Good. And that's quite good land to do it. Yeah, we could well. yeah. So we've got a big car park there as well, that's a great I just remember we're doing that location. Mm -hmm. uh, Angela spoke about it the other day, we've got to go funeral and say, I've just joined, how do you think I feel? Hmm? Eh? Well you've just joined the live and that's how you feel confused. Right, okay, that's probably <laughs> that, right. Right, so the weekend we had let me try and get this. We had a young husky and we had the thirteen year old one. We had a seven month right. Yeah, you're you're confused because you're I was going to say she's old. She's actually Fiona is getting on in life, isn't she? She's like probably ages with about me, so I'm waiting for the slander to come back. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we had two huskies, we had three wow. Labradors. We had a Cocker, a Springer, we had a Caucasian Shepherd, we had uh, a wee Terrier, we had two Romanian Rescue Mongrels, because oh, yeah. that's the easiest way to call mm -hmm. them, because we yeah. had a Master Great Dane Cross, right, we had the other wee Romanian Rescue. Did you say the Mali? Yeah, I had the oh, Mali. Mali. Confused. You're confused. No hope. <laughs> um. Right. <laughs> Ma Mali, uh, we had uh, Sam's German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. uh, you said that lab we said, didn't you? Well, we had three labs. Mm, we had so the two cool. that the, the family came. So the, the father and daughter, that was really good. Uh, father brought his daughter along and they were able to do a... a that's what's great about man trailing. Yeah. It can be a family event, guys. So there was a family with two Labradors and the 15-year-old daughter worked one. Uh, what's that? Right, 20th. 2nd and 3rd or 9th and 10th of July. Right, okay. I will look at that and I'll get back to you. Okay? Uh, 20... Well, the the, the 20... Is it 2nd and 3rd? Mm. Is that what you said? July? And 10th of July, yeah? yeah? Right, okay. We'll look at that. Beagle as well. What? Did Bruno the Beagle? Yeah. The Beagle? Yeah, well said, Sam. The Beagle. I forgot the Beagle. The Beagle was the really good. Was the uh, yeah, the Beagle was good. I just try to remember off the top of my head. Uh, I think off the video. The, let us see guys, we ended up with 20 dogs, we were only supposed to have, I think it was 18 in the end. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sam was always going to bring one of her dogs that she's got in her pack anyway because Sam organised it for us. So she got a certificate and was able to do a couple of searches. I actually put Sam in the deep end because Sam, like Angela, is going to want to do a man trailing instructor's course soon. So I gave uh, Sam a little go with uh, delivering the lesson to me and I was <laughs> a real good. bastard I was I was really I she said she said put the line on the on the dog so I put the line on top of the dog right uh and then she said oh do tight circles and I said how tight and she said oh tight circles <laughs> so uh, uh I think Tez was doing the trail for me mm -hmm. so I was like rubbing myself up against Tez and she's just shaking her head she said, what? I said well you said a tight circle you didn't say how tight right you just said a tight circle uh and I turned up with my hat around the wrong way and everything because I was just like <laughs> Mr. Stupid. So, uh, Taking the yeah, but she had to think. And because of uh, when you're giving the man trail instructions out, you have to keep it pretty basic and simple, yeah. okay, so people understand. So I was playing the stupid first time ever handler for her. Yeah, you <laughs> were a total <laughs> dick. So Sam, Sam said I was a total dick because I was playing the, taking the place of the student. And Sam mm. had to tell me how to do it. Uh, language mouth over there. The ladies here. Fuck off. Right, so, <laughs> so there was, uh, yeah, so I, I was a total dick to Sam because uh, I wanted to see how good she was. And, and Sam is quite good, but I was a dick because I was playing really stupid. Putting her to the test. Yeah, putting her to the test to see how good she was at instructing. It was just a bit of fun and laughter, but uh, yeah, I was a bit of a dick. But then the serious side was, because I was working near Brown Lab, the chocolate lab they had, uh, Bruni was called, don't know why, maybe because they're a chocolate lab or they've got some affiliation to Glasgow Celtic, I don't know. But uh, once I started uh, trailing that dog, the idea was to show them how quick sometimes you have to work the line 
and Bruni was a really good dog, the Labrador, and it just showed you because I was, as soon as I started trailing that dog, I never gave that dog any more instructions from when we started that search, and it was to give the, the delegates, or we'll call them, we'll call them delegates because they were there, it was to give them uh, a, a, a demonstration of, you don't even speak to the dog and say any other words after that. It's all about line handling and watching the body language of the dog. And yeah, I know Julie was mentioning earlier on that she don't think Buddy'd be great, but you've seen all those German yeah. Shepherds at Millport. They were all uh, nervous. They, people, they, everybody that came, Julie, was nervous as hell. And any dog can do they were very surprised. Now, the thing to understand, guys, those that have got reactive dogs to both people and other dogs, Speaking of stupid, guess who started a trail at the top of my patio steps? Ended up in A and E after smacking my hand against the railings I as Jackie was naps. Why did you even start at the stop of your, your your steps? Why? Why would you do that? You know I mean, no, 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 no. that's just stupid, isn't it? Right. So. <laughs> so. Could you imagine that? <laughs> right. So. <laughs> and she and and to be honest, Jack Jackers Yeka is. Yeka, I always say Yeka. Yeka, because it's like J. Yeka is actually quite a laid back dog, so how you <laughs> fell over, I do not know. Because she's like so chilled out and she doesn't even pull hard. So, uh, yeah, the, those that. that he's only just no, turned not one. Long. Not as that, long as it. We, was seven. we had dogs on there at seven months old, and mm -hmm. I think the cocker was younger than that when yeah. the cocker was about. Five months old. Yeah. Uh, Uber started trailing as soon as he had his jabs, Julie. Uh, it's absolutely fine. Uh, it's low impact. They're not running or anything else. He's just walking. Uh, poor you. Trip over your feet. Yeah. But she was trailing my daughter. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, that's probably why she's excited. Peeps, cheeps, what? Quite Peeps. how young you were saying. All right. Yeah. Over. Uh, little Uber started trailing at 13, 14 weeks old. I started him on little intensity trails. Uh, you can see that cat in a minute, actually. Did you hear that? Yeah. All ah, right. Yeah. So, uh, we've got a guest downstairs at the moment. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you want to go and. Uh, Angela's away to deal with something at the moment. Uh, so, basically, uh, what happened was, yeah. Any dog can come. Now, we had everybody that came to man trailing in Cumbria, Millport, technically. Okay, guys, that was, uh, there was loads of people panicking about, can my dog get this? My dog is this, my dog is that. There was nothing to worry about, absolutely nothing. And then, again, up at Samantha's, there was quite a few people on that course. People are always a little bit apprehensive when they first come. And... Uh, Mark, who was up there with his rescue dog, I worked with Mark four years ago when he first got his rescue dog. He's now moved up to where Sam was. He was totally emotional about the whole event. Uh, at the end of the day, when he saw his dog searching, the guy was emotional. There was tears nearly coming down his eyes, etc. Uh, really enjoyed it. Couldn't believe his dog was able to do it. And this is the thing. People don't realise their dog can do this type of stuff. Uh, and, and it really is, you know, quite good to see your dog actually doing what it was bred to do and that's work and search dogs were all great but be prepared for the really big dogs pulling not yeah oh, yeah no. well that that was the the big shepherd there was only a couple but that was down to line handling, handling guys yeah. uh you know so it was down to a little bit of poor handling on on that and people giving the dog too much line but apart from that it was absolutely fine one of the things to understand as well and, and fiona will tell you that after most of the dogs had trailed they were pretty chilled out and quiet mm -hmm. because they've worked their brains and this is the problem is that people will take their dog out and exercise it and exercise it and exercise it and what they're doing is turning that dog into an athlete but what they don't realize is that once you start working on things like scent work like man trailing scent detection all this type of stuff they're having to use their mental sort of ability to get around these things and most of the dogs are knackered now I think my my two only did a couple as demos and they were good. They were yeah. they were at the flat with Angela because we myself and Anne were away at a function, and uh, the the dogs were out for the count and everybody that we spoke to had been on the course said the dogs were asleep, 
and much the same as the guys that came up to Ross Shire last week, last weekend at Sam's, all the dogs were absolutely exhausted. The, there were some dogs that showed up, they were a wee bit excitable, a wee bit barky when they arrived. After the first couple of searches were done in, they were absolutely goosed and most of them were asleep in the cars. Mm -hmm. So bear that in mind, Julie, it's it's absolutely mm -hmm. fine. Uh, some that were reactive as well and there was dogs yeah. going past and they didn't even... And, and this is the thing, Julie, so we had a couple of reactive dogs that were dog reactive and those dogs were actually searching and there was dogs, because the place was still open to the public and there was dogs walking past and they never batted an eyelid mm -hmm. at these dogs that walked past in the public area. Uh, which reminds me because sometimes uh, it was Gary and uh, oh god uh, Gary and uh, you know oh, Beth. Beth. Beth Beth and Gary brought Arthur uh, their wire hair Vizsla mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, Arthur gets a little bit of uh, like fence running in front it's sort of barrier frustration when he sees other dogs on the fence and he was on a search and this little dog, a couple of terriers, ran up to the fence yep, barking. and Arthur just looked at it and carried on searching and uh, Julie, you seen Arthur at the dog training and he can be a wee bit lippy but he just got on with the job and he, he, he was absolutely chilled out as hell, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah, he was chilled out as hell, so yeah, so listen, if you've got a reactive dog, we put things in place to deal with it and uh, if your dog's a wee bit overexcited, we also put things in place as well. So some dogs are a wee bit drivey, and sometimes we need to reduce their drive a little bit lower because sometimes they're a wee bit over the top. So all we do is change reward to change the drive. With Uber, he is massively aroused, mm -hmm. so I have to... We used to train him on rabbit skin because he was really high and drivey for it, and he was really excited. But what I've done is to put him back onto food for the reward, because the rabbit skins and the uh, squirrel skins are just sending them over the edge. It just goes nuts. It just goes nuts. <laughs> and, and it's like a bucking bronco <laughs> on, uh, uh, on the line in it. Mm -hmm. He's like a little 15k oh. spaniel. And I'm like, whoa. So what we did is we reduced him to food. And that lowers his drive. Because he's not as drivey f uh, for the food as he is for the rabbit skin. And then there was some dogs that, uh, like the, the other little cocker that was there at the weekend. Yeah. Uh, What's his name again? Because uh, I had to send him a certificate. Anyway, uh, his little cocker was like not drivey enough. So what we did is he said to us that uh, he likes a ball. So we changed the reward from food to a ball. And he was absolutely fantastic after that. So it's the, the main aims of man trailing are one, uh, your dog has to understand the game, which is searching for the person, obviously. Find out what your dog's best reward is, whether it's ball, whether it's food, or whether it's just a person. Because with Rico, my uh, Flynn, did that say Flynn? Yeah, Flynn. I, I hope I got the right name on the certificate. Why do you think you've put it? I don't know. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> right. You'll soon find it. <laughs> right. I'll get a message saying you gave me the right one. So, the, uh, yeah. What was his name? Sam, what was that handler's name? I don't fucking remember. It's in my book. <laughs> You've probably matched a different dog with. <laughs> it's in my book. Hold on. Uh, oh, shit. I'm, I'm terrible. Uh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I've got Sam's message here. Look at it. Fucking hell. Kim said there were some ladies in this, this chat tonight. I didn't know. Uh, Sean. Right, I kept calling everybody. What? I can't remember. <laughs> sure. I can't remember. You're what was no, I, I, I was I was saying to some some people in the course because I'm shaping names. Mm -hmm. I said, "What's your name again?" And then they'd say something. I said, "Right, today you're going to be called Mark." You kept calling somebody. Was it Colin or something? I can't remember. You kept calling them. Oh, <laughs> it's a completely wrong name. So I just said, today, mate, you're going to be called Mark, because that's the only name I can remember, right? Yeah. Dogs were called... I know the dog was called Flynn, but... Okay. <laughs> uh, I better check that certificate, actually. You better. Yeah, did I'll have a look at it later. Yeah, I did send it to him, so... Right. I've not had a message back yet, so he must have got it. I'll message him later, actually. Uh, 
So yeah, th there was there was plenty of dogs on there, and uh, the wee cocker. What we had to do was rather than reduce his drive, we had to increase it, and that's how we done it. Is that an age thing? Yeah, absolutely, Julie. It definitely is an age thing. It's a good job I've got my young apprentice <laughs> beside me. Who's what age? Are you 24, 25? 26. Fuck, see, I thought you were older than that, right? So, 25, 26. You'll need to carry sticky labels. Do you know what, <laughs> Fiona? Before I went up to Sam's, I thought, well, I go out and buy some sticky labels and get people to put them on their. <laughs> That's why you bought a whiteboard. <laughs> put them on like... a sweatshirt, right? I, I fucking. That would be a good name right, tag. Anyway. anyway, so that was the man trail, and so as I said, guys, we've got some dates coming up. Now, you may have seen the the post I put out in regards to the dog sports. I wonder who said. Names, numbers, who needs them? Well, it, 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 see when you say that, Cam, I actually remember my working dog was 2 Bravo 98. They have that tattooed in their ear in the military. I, I still remember, remember that. that. <laughs> 2 Bravo 98. <laughs> I remember my military number. I remember all my police numbers. Right? Drum dinty. So, my first ever police number with Thames Valley was uh, 2865. Right? And then when I went to Metropolitan Police, it was... Uh, Four four four, right? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> was it? No, it was it was four one, four one five, right? That was <laughs> so it was T four one five, and then uh, what was the next one? When I, my first uh, shoulder number in Strathclyde was six five two, right? And then it was D four four, right? And you can't even remember no, three four six. It was three four six. Uniform three four six, November six five two. Uh, what was the other one? I had an H number as well. Uh, so I remember them all. And my military <laughs> number was 24648678, right? And uh, my dog number was Bravo 2... Uh, Bravo 2... Uh, November Bravo 298, right? And that was the ear number for the dog. So that the, the uh, working dogs have tattoos within their ears. Oh. So I remember all of them, but I can't remember his name on the course that we do. Mm. So, yeah, we'll have to get some sticky labels. So anyway... Well, it wasn't sticky labels. <laughs> Uh, oh aye. so so there was a post one of my uh good friends contacted me and he said have you seen this nonsense so i went and had a look at it and it was absolutely ridiculous so basically uh those that do sport with dogs like man trailing ipo shoots hound uh scent work uh agility fly ball any more that you can think of off the top dog of your head diving? uh dog diving uh Pulling, canny uh, cross, uh, cross uh, bike jaw, uh, scooter jaw. Uh, the the yeah. list is endless, guys. To give dogs something to juice as well, it wasn't six six six. So I think you actually said that, wasn't it, the devil? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you've got all these dog sports, and basically what you have to understand, a lot of the dogs that we have, like Julie's got a working lab, Kim's got German shepherds, Fiona's got a working shepherd, I've got a Rotty and a working cocker. I've got something else, but we'll talk about that <laughs> next week. Uh, <laughs> We, uh, you know, Beth's got a, a, a Vizsla, mm. Joy's got Shepherds, everybody's got a dog, and that dog used to have a job, okay? So we bring these dogs into family homes, and most of the dogs that we go out to uh, as, a tr as trainers, most of the dogs that we go out to are stressed because they've got nothing to oh, do, Lord. right? They're sitting in a, a home environment, they've got no jobs to do, uh, people aren't really fulfilling their needs as far as we can see. And there's really not a lot going into these dogs that were specifically bred for a specific purpose. So, this is when the destruction happens. This is when the boredom sets in and the dog starts employing herself or goes self-employed. Where things get destroyed. Uh, dog starts uh, carrying out behaviours which become self-rewarding for those dogs. Once those behaviours become self-rewarding, what happens is those behaviours now become unwanted behaviours and then people like us, mm -hmm. uh, Kim and, and Danny and all these different trainers have to go out. Mm -hmm. So lo and behold, uh, one of our good trainer friends sends me a message and says, look, have you seen this nonsense, etc, etc, it said that uh, dog sports stress dogs out. Now, those that have recently done man trailing, I think a lot of working breeds kept as pets, get a hard time. When they wreck the house because they need yeah they do yeah. and that's the problem fiona so uh yeah yeah so as don was saying sport gives them an outlet okay most of the sport that's designed for dogs these days is actually designed around what these dogs were bred to work for 
So you have things like agility, things like fly ball. So, you, you know, they, they all have a purpose to give that dog a job. If you look at the scent work, a lot of guys that do scent work, you'll see they've got spaniels, labs, and, and a lot of shepherds, okay? But we can use any dog on scent work because the dog has a nose and that's its first sense. Then you look at, you know, bite jaw and, and uh, canny cross. A lot of people who own sledge dogs like huskies, malamutes, these types of dogs, and, and your your uh, Norwegian sledge dogs as well, which are slightly different, okay? The, all these guys give them an out by doing canny cross and uh, things like bite jaw and scooter jaw and things like that. If you look at what we do, your guys in IPO and shoots hound, yes, they do a lot of bite work. Not everyone wants to work their dogs. So, yes, but they don't, but they need to give them an out, Julie. That's the thing. They need to give those dogs something to do. Even if you're not giving them a job to do, it's really important that you fulfill their needs in some way. And whether that's through play with mm -hmm. you and them, that dog personally, that's down to you. I know a lot of people don't want to work their dogs, but they have to understand when the dog starts wrecking the place, it might be down to the very fact that that dog's frustrated because it can't get an out, okay? And that's the thing. So, do I enjoy getting up at 6 a.m. every morning? No, I don't. But because I've got dogs, I need to, all right? That's me being disciplined, getting up at 6 every morning, getting down, getting the dogs out, feeding the dogs, getting what I need to do, and then giving them something to do straight away. And then, obviously, because I do a lot of training anyway, and because I do things like man trailing, I can then employ my dogs in that, which gives them something. And it's not unusual for us to be sitting in the house at night and all our dogs are completely sparked out, sleeping because... Like dog, you know? Yeah, we've worked up. <laughs> so, we've got... The Spaniel is there on the couch. That's the office couch, by the way, before anybody has a go at us, right? And we've got the Rottweiler just lying on the floor there. Both of the dogs are just chilling out while we're on here. And that just goes to show you that the dogs can chill out if you give them some... What's that, 6 a.m.? It's truth. What's wrong with that calm, 6 a.m.? What time okay. did you get up? About half six. Yeah, about half six. What time did you get up, Cam? Cam is slightly old. I'm going to get battered, isn't I? Yeah. on Sunday. That's his third <laughs> yeah, right, so, old comment. Right, so if you think about it, guys... All these dogs that, that a lot of trainers go out to are stressed out. Mm -hmm. But once you start giving them a job to you know, tennis, Jesus Christ. What do the dogs do until 10 then? Hey, watch. <laughs> Remember who your instructor is on Sunday <laughs> for your session? Tell me. Right, yeah. so. Uh, okay. Right, go. So the, uh, a lot of the dogs that don't have stuff to do are actually the dogs that, that we end up going out to. Not just us, but other trainers. So, uh, I'm asleep. She's lucky. Yeah, I'm very. She's absolutely lucky. Maybe she's up. I know. Imagine that, a Border Collie that sleeps <laughs> at 10, 10 in the morning. <laughs> Wouldn't be yeah. mine. Most Border Collies I know are oh. getting up ready to... They start yeah. stretching off, ready to go and chase sheep and shit like that. So, uh, what we... So, like I said, guys, most of the uh, the stuff, you know, that, that dogs end up doing, that we end up going out for unwanted behaviours, it's generally down to the fact that dogs are a mess. I, I'll teach you. Teach me what? Okay. Must Probably be something about search what? Buddy will sleep, sleep until nine. nine. How do you... What's going on? What's going wrong? What time, <laughs> hold on. What time do you <laughs> lot stay up to? Let's look at it from that perspective. Because I'm generally asleep at 10 o'clock at night, half 10, 10 at night, yeah. yeah. And then the dogs are asleep right through at 6, so technically sleeping that's 8 hours. Mm -hmm. Macy would be. Yeah. So I'm still getting eight, 8 hours. So guys, what time are you going to bed? Because I'm going to bed at 10 at night. So technically speaking, if these guys are going later, well, that's understandable. Yeah. Right? And the kids are playing. Poppy's the same. Maybe have a laid back door and walk. How to have a laid back dog and walk her down by 8 and 9 p.m. and didn't get up to 11? I would say that's a lazy dog. Mm -hmm. Very. <laughs> and it's a quality dog. But, but seeing that, like, my, my well, dogs are asleep throughout well, the day when I'm working as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. So these guys are asleep napping. napping. So yeah, they, they probably get about 17, 18 hours a day anyway because he spends a lot of time lying on his place when I'm doing the video work. Yeah. yeah and then. Some of the times that we've been out doing some training outside in, in our estate, okay. we've had to wake these guys up and get them out get and them. drag them out. Yeah, so with, within reason. It's just that I'm in a routine. I get up at six every morning. It's just the way I am. Uh, 
know what I mean? Some teams Anne says to me, why are you getting up at that time where I've got dogs? That's my first answer, I've got dogs. He gets lots of brain work, games, etc. But that, yeah, it's understandable. Like I say, our, our dogs sleep a lot anyway through the day uh, when we're doing stuff. So they're pretty knackered when I'm sitting watching the TV. What's that? Yetta takes herself to bed at 10.30. I dug it. Mm. Listen, guys, I, I know what you're saying. It's just that I got up at 6 because that's the way I do it. Uh, it's just the Has way I am. Has been opened? What? Has this been opened? No, do you want it? I'm going to have it. She's still my water. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the dogs are asleep for up to 17, 18 hours a day anyway. If you actually start breaking it down, it's just that I go at 10 and I'm up at 6. So, mm. yeah. The dogs are generally asleep at that time anyway, so it's not a problem. So, as I was saying, we're, we're off subject there. So, uh, then I flat out fast asleep. Yeah. Same here. What do you want? You're supposed to be sleeping. You show me up here. <laughs> right. So, uh, as you see, the cocker came in. Uh, the, as I was saying, guys, a lot of the dogs that are frustrated and they're a bit stressed out are generally down to the fact they're not getting something to do. I mean, uh, Fiona, Fiona was saying there, that, that she gives a lot of brain work, is that what yeah, we said? Yeah, James yeah Karen, Karen said as well, they're giving the dogs a lot of brain work anyway, so that's why the dogs mm -hmm. are asleep, because they're, you know, they're exercising mm -hmm. their brain. But, also but to see that, that sports stress dogs out is absolutely a nightmare, but the other thing as well to take into consideration, guys, is that, uh, <laughs> you you know, it's, they say it stresses dogs out, but the same, the very same people are the ones that are pushing, 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 pushing for positive reinforcement. Well, every one of the the, the activities that we carry out is positive reinforcement. Yeah. When the dogs are searching, they get that positive reinforcement at the end, hence the reason why they're doing it. Okay, so if they didn't want to do it, they wouldn't do it. But they do do it. Yes, we ask them to do it. So when we ask the dogs to trail and we might encourage them by doing a passive backwards walk for a couple of steps, the dogs pick up the scent and then they start working. And at the end of that okay. scent, they, they absolutely get rewarded mm -hmm. big style. And they can, as soon as the dogs start doing it, they, you can actually see that the body language and everything changes because they really like what mm -hmm. they're doing. And that's the thing. So, yeah, if, if they didn't want to do it, they wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Yeah, you know I mean, you're giving them something to do. And, and I don't think one of those dogs at the weekend, I mean, even the 13 year old deaf husky that, that Tez owns. That dog was into the search. Well, as soon as we guided that dog in the way we wanted it, that dog was happy enough to go and search. We did. The, now, remember the dogs are out in front of us. It's not like we're dragging the dog up the path. Okay, we're not dragging it to say, right, you're coming to search. The most you actually do at the start of any search, if the dog's not picked a scent up, is we, we do what's called a passive walk back. So we turn in the direction of where the person is going and we start taking one or two steps back, right? And then, as we take one or two steps back, the dog then takes up the lead and then starts working in front of us. Now, those dogs are working about eight to ten feet in front mm -hmm. of us. So, if they stop, we stop. If they go, we go. So, they're actually, they're actually, you know, basically, it's up to them how fast we go mm -hmm. and how slow we go. They're taking the lead on it. So they're actually out working in front of us. So if they didn't want to do it, they wouldn't be dragging us up the path. Mm -hmm. So that's what you need to bear in mind as well. So I actually spoke with some of the other man training instructors in the last couple of days, and they said that everybody that they have doing it absolutely loves it. What do you, what, what do you what do? What dog do you got? What dog you got? Who, uh, Fiona or us, you know what dogs I've got? What Fiona said, I'm sure no dog is forced to do something they're not interested in. We all have different things we like, and I guess dogs might prefer one sport to another. Yeah. Depends yeah. what they're predisposed to do as well. Karen, what, what, uh, who, who was that for? What dog he got? Was that for Fiona? If it's Fiona, she's got a couple of spaniels. Oh, that, Kim. That was Kim. Kim's got three German Shepherds. No, wait, Fiona, you've got a German Shepherd, but Karen, I thought, was answering Fiona. Uh, right. Fiona we thought Karen was asking Fiona Alexander, but she was asking, actually asking Kim. Then Fiona still thought it was about her. Now, Fiona's got a German Shepherd, Kim's got three German Shepherds, Karen's got a Collie, and the other Fiona's got two Spaniels. Coda absolutely loves going out on the bike. On the bike. <laughs> I am on the brakes most of the time for my own safety. 
Yeah, that's probably about <laughs> right, Kerry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on the bike, not the bike. That that was a husky. You might have seen this husky shirt, and Kerry's husky yeah. was absolutely spot on. <laughs> when it, Kerry, I, I loved watching. I actually threatened to steal her husky. It was an absolute <laughs> cracking husky. I've got a bit. It's actually in one of the pictures. I'm holding a husky in the picture. Oh, right. Is it on one of the videos? Yeah, it's on the video, video but the uh, so Fiona's was the big black and grey white husky. Right. Beautiful big boy coder. Yeah. Uh, gobby as shit when you go out there. Typical husky. Yeah, but quiet down during the day. Mine always has a stress shake off right at the start of the trail. Yep. Uh, if they don't enjoy trailing, then they wouldn't be ready to go. No. Can't talk. Sorry, what did I miss? Uh, she was asking what dogs you've got, Kim, and we said Jim and Shep was three of them. Forget it getting getting off course. I think I know yeah, it right, okay. Funny. How do you stop a GS from coming up behind you and going through your legs? Like. I would suggest you keep your legs shut. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean she's <laughs> going through your legs? Right. <laughs> Close your legs, yeah. But, I was gonna actually say something, but I better not, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll keep it clean. Uh She's got three GSDs, Karen. Uh, yeah, Fiona says close your legs. Uh, Donna, if if you're standing there with the open, then you're giving the dog access to the centre, and that's why the dog will go through. So if the dog can't go through, it's not going to go through. Uh, if it's coming through from the front, close your legs, and then do a sit and present in front of you. You could do that. If it's coming through behind, it's because it's able to get through. Mm -hmm. uh, so use a lead to keep the dog to the side, either left or right, depending what side you want the dog on. So that's if it's coming through from the rear, then obviously make sure there's no space for the dog to come through. Use the lead to bring it over to the left or right. You may have to use lead pressure to do that. But if it's coming through to you at the front, why not bring the dog up to present in front of you on a recall? Dog looks up in your reward for sitting in front without going through. Uh, if the dog has been with you all the time, have you inadvertently train that behaviour to go through because some people train middle where they bring the dog through between the, the middle of their legs. Nasty. So uh, Angela does that with her collie. She brings her through in the middle and she brings her through to heel left and right as well. So yeah, it might be worth not allowing your dog to come through. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, it lost Wi-Fi. Yes, she started pushing through. Pushing through from front or rear. You would have... Hi, uh, even pa, have you spoken about pulling on the lead while walking your dog tonight? Hmm. Uh, pulling on the lead while walking your dog tonight. Evening, pal. Uh, no, nope. Rob. Uh, do you want us to talk about it? Uh, we rear. rear. Okay, Donna, if it's coming through from rear, lead on. Yep. Legs closed, don't allow it to happen. Bring the dog to left or right, depending on what side you want that dog and reward for being at the side of you so i would be massively rep, rep, rep after rep after rep and i'd be rewarding that dog left and right depending on what side you want hundreds and hundreds of reps that dog goes oh do you know what it's crap going in the middle because i don't get nothing and uh, if i go left and right then yes i'm going to get rewarded so that's the best way to solve it yeah yeah uh go on rob you have a question yeah rob's got a question right I'm yeah. We're waiting in Rob's question. What kind of dogs got? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping he's going to tell me. Thanks, yeah. You, test. <laughs> when you're ready, Rob, thank you. Quiet now. Everybody's waiting for a big question. Right, so many was on there. Yeah. Uh, still got 21, 21 that's uh, right. Well, yeah. if you better still be on this. Uh, I don't know. You can you tell who we are, actually. I don't, 22. Uh, that's Lewis jump back on. You <laughs> see that's that's still be on <laughs> uh, right. So, Rob, if it's lead pulling, let us know what the issue is. Right, okay. Yeah. When we take our working cocker spaniel out on the lead, going out from home, he's fine. But going home, he pulls like mad the closer we get to him. Okay, strip it back to basics, please, Rob. All the way back, I would be building engagement. What we do with any lead poiling, uh, present. So, Lewis is just letting us know. Lewis, uh, sorry, uh, Rob, any lead pulling, uh, what I would do is we would start uh, tons and tons of reps back at the home address, okay? And then what we do is we build lots of engagement. So, tons of reps on engagement, 
rewarding the dog on names then what i would do is probably position my hand and i would do lots of reps up and down the street outside rep up rep back rep up rep back rep up and then once the dog has started getting used to engaging with me again then i'm starting to rewarding by my side whichever place i want the dog now if you want a competition heel then obviously you're going to want to reward the dog right in the seat of your trousers but if you want the dog just to be in the vicinity of your left hand side because heel is different from loose lead walking mm -hmm. okay i would massively get that dog back right back to square one and i would start rewarding for that position over and over and over and over and again you said when you take the working cocker out on the lead going from home he's fine but what is fine okay mm -hmm. what might be fine to you might not be fine to anybody else i started back in the kitchen room table. yeah so start tons and tons of repetitions on engagement in the kitchen tons of engagement in your garden if you've got one outside the house back and forward back and forward 10 to 15 minute intervals rep after rep after rep after rep lead on up and down up and down up and down and get it into that dog's mind that it has to stick beside you always reward in this vicinity beside you here if you're rewarding in front the dog's going to go in the front if you're rewarding too far behind the dog's going to go too far behind reward where you want that dog use the dog's own food mm -hmm. some people say their dog's not food motivated really your dog <laughs> would be dead if it's not food motivated it has to eat now it's not unusual they keep coming back and forth yeah yeah uh, don't just do it in straight lines or rob figure of eights back and forth side to side every direction you could go and what you'll find is the dog will start going where the hell's he going and he'll start keeping up with you uh what we can do, Rob, well, let's do a video on that one yep. next couple of days. We'll do a video yep. tomorrow because mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a, a practice dog tomorrow, actually. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We, we've got a dog tomorrow that we're going to start training uh, from square one. That's a puller. So we'll do some work with that, Rob, yep. and then uh, we'll do a video and we'll put the video up because we're going to do a, a, we're going to do a, 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 a document on this dog. So, yes, we'll, we'll start work with a dog tomorrow. Uh, I'll be doing engagement first thing in the morning. Uh, response to name, feed, 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 feed. Then Angela will be joining us later on in the afternoon. We're going to do a hell of a lot of engagement work with that dog and we're going to do a lot of lead walking. Back on personal platform now, eh? Kim was on our business page joining in. Right. <laughs> yeah, Rob, what we'll do is we'll do a video on that because uh, we're going to document uh the dog that we're going to start working with tomorrow well, there's going to be a few uh, a, a, if you remember clyde was reactive with dogs wanting to pin them down in rough play he's been in training away from other dogs no distractions either and recall spot on what's the next step and how do we move on what you could do fiona uh, if you're talking about uh reactive uh, being reactive towards dogs set him up at a distance uh do response to name and start rewarding when he sees the dog uh if he's what we what's that Buddy has been spitting his treats out while training, which I think it was due to the heat. If that makes sense, I just gave him more attractive treats. Well, no. Go back to his basic food. Uh, don't go out and spend lots of money on treats. We don't. We don't spend lots of money on treats. We're getting a good feed the other day <laughs> right. with our own food. Uh, you know, the, the dogs are uh, eating their own food. I mean, Angel was over here, what, two days ago? Yeah. And how much food did our dogs get, man? <laughs> They, they were eating uh, cold pressed kibble that we buy from Marcus Mule, and uh, that's all the dogs had to work with. And they they were gobbling it down, weren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, guys, use the dog's own food. You know, at the end of the day, make them work for the food. The food becomes of higher value. It, it was just chicken. If he's not yeah. eating it, put it away. Because trust me, he will eat it. Guys, there's no, there's no harm in a little bit of food deprivation when you're training. The dogs will get it in the end. They'll get, do you know what? I'm not going to get mm -hmm. fed if I don't start working. Food becomes of higher value, all right? And you, because you're delivering it, become of higher value to the dog. That's what it's about. Just get it, and, and the dogs get it, all right? I've got to tell the dog's out in that shite one. He was spitting the kibble out. Well, just put it put away. It away yeah. Put it away. Go. He's a Labrador, trust me. If you're giving in to him and say, yeah. well, you're not eating that, I'll give you something else. Who's training who? Yeah. All right, I get yeah. it all the time. People say, oh, he doesn't take the kibble. Well, he's not taking the kibble because you're giving him too many choices. All right? Dogs are predators by nature. They will eat because they'll need to. All right? It's not unusual for a dog to starve itself for a couple of days. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen it. It happens. 
trust me, that dog will start eating. Mm -hmm. uh, people, like I said, people are always saying, oh, my dog's not food motivated. If they weren't mood, food motivated, they'd be dead. Mm -hmm. Right, they would be. They, they wouldn't be living. All right, dogs need to eat Good like point. we do. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, we're going to document. We're going to be training a dog for the next few weeks, and we're going to document its journey. It's going to be quite an interesting one, guys. So Rob, we will do some lead walking with that dog, and we'll put it on video. Okay, we will be building masses and masses of the uh, video work with this mm -hmm. dog. Uh, Coda starved herself for seven days. Yeah, and how mm -hmm. is she now, Kim? She eating now? I bet you she'd eat. <laughs> right. I could uh, do the same with Nathan. She was like that. Listen, it, it's it's. Bets will tell you that there's no harm in uh, you know fasting. putting a dog on a fasting diet. Yeah, uh, sometimes. because uh, you know, I, Sam showed me that video with the collie. Then that collie's overweight, mm -hmm. so that that dog could live off its fat for two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it was. Yep. Right. Uh, as long as it's getting water. Yep. Yeah, as long as the dog's getting water, guys. Uh, it's absolutely fine. Okay, the dog will eat. Trust me. She she shouts at me if I don't feed her. Yeah, Anne knows that. I, I shout at Anne if I don't get fed. <laughs> right. So, guys. Hi, Zach. Right. Uh, sorry. Who should I have him around other dogs? Oh, that was about that question. Right. So, should I have him around other dogs in the lead? And Rob, when he responds to his name, he has done very well with this sister who used to also. Mines can't eat anything else apart from his kibble juice. So, yeah, so if you if you use that Donna, mm -hmm. and you're using that for for food and reward, fine, that's great. Uh, Fiona, you can you can sort of set up a bat scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, the big he would eat his dinner, but he would not mm -hmm. his food out if I was using it for treats. Trust me, are you feeding them from the bowl? If you're feeding him from the bowl, he's free feeding. Get the bowl off the floor, measure his food out for the, the day, stick it in your pouch. You don't have to give him it all at once. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Pick the bowl up, measure his yeah. food out, stick it in your pouch. Season. Right? That's why. Right? He'll be like, where's the bowl? Well, mm -hmm. sorry, mate. You ain't getting the bowl. It's got to come from me. Yeah, okay? Right? Gonna to have to work for it, so get them doing engagement, get them doing obedience work, and then feed them for that. Mm -hmm. All right, that's spread what you need it to do. The day as well. Yeah, that's a good spread it right through the day. Okay, does you know, give him about 10 pieces of kibble. Mm -hmm. If he's not taking it, stick it up out the road. Trust me, he'll start taking it. He's a Labrador anyway. <laughs> I've never known a Labrador that isn't food motivated, <laughs> so he's not doing it because you're giving him choice, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. And then you get some of these people going, Oh. The dog should have choice, and you're like, shut up. You shouldn't say no to them. Like, oh, we shouldn't say no to the dog, or oh, let's ask for consent from the dog. Are you kidding me? It's a dog. It's got 42 teeth. It's an opportunistic predator, and trust me, it'll eat if it's hungry. All right? Uh, I have to laugh sometimes because all these people that say their dogs don't eat, and then they put it up, I've got kids. Mm. And what do you do when your kid doesn't eat their dinner? You either stick it in the bin or you put it away in the fridge and you'll get it later. And you always go, that, that, that thing always comes out, right? Dogs know they need food to survive. When hunger kicks in, they'll come looking. Yeah. Yep. So, see that thing, right? Mm -hmm. The uh, You always say to people, you know, what do you do if your kids don't eat their dinner? Mm -hmm. And they say, well, we throw it in the bin or it goes out. Well, What's why, is, it, why, why <laughs> is the dog getting away with it? Think about it, guys. Why is the dog getting it for free? And then you say things like, what was the other one I said? Oh, you know how they're saying, oh, we have to give the dog consent. It's a predator. It's 42 for teeth. Yeah, asking for a dog's consent. Come on. Jesus Christ. Probably they're a working crap. animal. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you ask your kids for consent? There's a question. <laughs> right. Do you ask your kids for consent to do something? So. Go to bed or something? I don't know. Could you explain the bat? Yeah, behaviour oh. adjustment. Right. Uh, it's a technique by Grisha Stewart. Okay, so basically what you would do, Fiona, you would take your dog to a location. This is the easiest way to describe it. Okay, I did describe this last week on the board. Yes. Right. In fact, hold on, what have we got here? We got a board. Ah. Right. Mm. We've got a pen. We've got a duster. Right. So... But, quick explanation, 
Right. Can you see? Yes, you can. Right, Fiona. Right, okay. But. Behaviour adjustment training, guys. Should it be in a trainer's toolbox? Yes, as far as I'm concerned, yes, it should. Okay. Bat was designed by Grisha Stewart. A lot of people don't like Grisha, but she does some good shit as well, although she does some crazy shit, mm -hmm. right? So, Rob hates her, right? I know. So, <laughs> I won't tell you what I think <laughs> right. So, Rob Elaine hates her, right? So, Bat, behaviour adjustment training, it was, a, it was a technique designed by Grisha Stewart. So, basically, it's about threshold training, Fiona, you know. okay? So, your dog's here, all right? You walk into the park, and then there's another dog here in the distance. Now, what you're looking for... Is your dog to clock? Hold on. Yeah, that's not it. Yeah. Your dog to clock this dog, right? From a distance. And as soon as that dog clocks your dog, or your dog clocks that dog, what you're looking for is your dog to disengage. As soon as your dog disengages, you start rewarding. So let's look at things that it might do a behaviour which is acceptable. It might go sniffing in the grass, right? When it looks up, the dog might no longer be there. So it's been a self-rewarding behaviour, sniffing in the grass, right? The idea is that you start closing the distance down to this impulse of arousal here. As you get closer, as soon as your dog reacts, okay? As soon as you set up the other dog might come Well, what you could do this with friends, mm -hmm. with strange dogs. That could be a way you could do it, and I understand where you come from. But the other way of doing it is because we're using a park and coat bridge, okay? And we know there's lots of dogs there, but what we're going to do is enter the park through an exit or entrance where we know we've got a fighting chance. So we know there's dogs in that park. So what we'll do is we're going to come in halfway down the road. Oh, so is this quick thing? Fiona, I've utilised a neighbour dog for a bat and it's been great. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so basically the idea is, is to close the distance down, okay? Over time, and that's how it works. The downside of this, it could take lots of time. Yeah. That's the problem. That's why a lot of people don't like using it, because mm -hmm. it takes lots of time and effort. And you have to micromanage the dog during this period. It so, for argument's sake, if you're micromanaging, right, it means you can only take the dog out at certain times. You have to look and say, right, is there any other arousal or impulse? Sometimes it means putting your dog in the back of the car, taking them to a location, looking at the location, going, right, where can I go in here where I can look at dogs from a distance and still get the behaviour that I want? There are some trainers do it where they go to certain parts and they come in another entrance, similar to what we're doing, and what they'll do is they'll come in at an entrance up here and all the dogs will be in the park over here. So by coming in here, they can view what's going on here and they can keep their distance Will the dog get used to that particular dog in it? No, because the dogs don't differentiate with other yeah. dogs, right? It's You've got to advocate for that as well. So it's about this association of any other mm -hmm. arousal or impulse, that other dog, okay? It's not just about one dog, Fiona. Okay, so the dog comes in and say, so he, myself and Angela are using Dumbeth Park and Coatbridge, right? So I'll give you an idea, right? So Dumbeth and Coat Bridge has four entrances into the park at every corner. Okay? Every corner has a gate and it's a massive park. What you've got is you've got a path that runs all the way around the park and in between you've got paths that go through the middle that meet in the middle. Okay? But what we found is there's a set of woods down here, right? So you've got all these trees down here down the side and what we found is there's a break in the fence here okay so what Marcel and Angela said okay we've got all these trees for cover and we found an entrance here through the fence all right and it's easy enough to walk a dog in so what we're going to do is we'll arrive at the park and look into the park see what we're playing with see what arousal's there see what impulse is there make sense and then what we'll do is we'll walk in now if it's too much here, what we'll do is we'll turn about and go back out and then bring the dog back in slowly. And then what we'll do, as we do that, we're looking for the dog to give us another behaviour, i.e. sniffing or disengagement back to us or disengaging to just go sniffing or doing another behaviour which is acceptable. As soon as the dog does that, then we'll start rewarding that so that the dog now understands that 
all these little dogs in here in the park and walking around the park mean absolutely jack shit. All right. What we need to do is make ourselves more appealing to the dog rather than the other dog. So yes, Fiona, Alexander, what you can do is you can use response to name. Dog sees the dog over here, say the dog's name like Clyde. Clyde looks around, reward the dog. So now Clyde associates seeing another dog as a positive outcome. Make sense? The downside is if your dog kicks off, you may or may not have to add a correction or you may or may not be over threshold and this is why a lot of trainers don't like using it mm. because this is where it takes time are those other dogs on or off lead no mm. they should be on lead when you see them karen if they're off lead and they're coming towards you then you are going to have to deal with that situation mm. so myself and angela yes we will go down to the park and we will be observing so this is about micromanagement so if you see dogs off lead there's no harm in you standing at a distance and if those dogs run in it's about how you react okay so you have to react accordingly so if you start panicking the chances are your dog will start panicking and kick off all right so this is about your body language as much as theirs you have to be calm you have to be chilled out otherwise your dog will kick off as well so that makes sense karen if you see a dog that's off lead and you feel that that dog is running in towards you then remove yourself from the situation totally mm. makes sense we really need to get pretty close before he would try anything however the way you taught us to walk past other dogs he now pays a lot of attention most dogs won't pass yeah yeah it's okay bad so fiona so what i'm saying and, and karen as well if there's other dogs off lead hi jamie you see angela's with me tonight because we've just been out to an emergency tonight so uh if you're going to use bat you're going to have to micromanage that's the way it works unfortunately karen if there's other dogs off lead unfortunately we live in a society where people think it's acceptable to just let their dogs off lead and run up to other people and not give a toss about it mm -hmm. so we have to manage their dogs as well so this is about you guys setting up a situation whereby you can control it so the dog doesn't have to so you have to advocate for your own dog and if another dog's going to run up, listen, if the other dog's off lead and you've asked that person to put it on lead and they fail to do so, you're quite justified within your rights to take appropriate action to stop that dog coming into your dog. That's how the law works. And if you don't uh, get any grief for it, fine. But if you get a bit of grief, give me a shout. I'll tell you the law and you can go back and quote it to them. If you do any action which stops their dog from running up and wrecking yours, that's what it's about, guys. That's mm -hmm. the problem with these people is they think, Oh, it's okay. You've heard the usual. It's okay is friendly as code for my dog has no recall. If your dog has no recall, the last place mm -hmm. it should be is off lead in a park, guys. Just wants to say hello. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say hello. Aye, friendly. <laughs> well, my fucking dog isn't. Okay, stick yours on a lead. Mm -hmm. And then the usual is, well, your dog shouldn't be in the park. It's no right if he's not friendly. My dog's on a lead. It's under control. Your dog is not. Didn't we see the two Border Terriers running about with daffies? Oh, yeah. So we... Pepsi can. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. Mm. So, uh, as I said, uh, we we were at Dumbeth Park uh, with a wee guy, weren't yeah. we? we? We were doing so, we went down there to wreck it. Uh, Dumbeth Park's in Coat Bridge, uh, just about four miles in that direction, okay? Mm -hmm. Out the windy. Uh, uh, it's probably about four miles, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, something like that. Two, two and a half to four miles. No, I think it's actually about. It's near that anyway, it's between two and four miles down the road. Massive, massive parks. So we went and wrecked it the other day and we seen lots of dogs. We had a little Uber with us. We did some work with Uber while we were there. Uh, I think we were actually coming back for Susie's when we did it. That was last week. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah, it was. So we were coming back and uh, we went to wreck the park. So uh, we were doing some bits and pieces. And as we were leaving the park, we heard a commotion going on, didn't you? And you looked yeah. through the trees and you could <laughs> see all these dogs kicking off. Now, there was a little dog, it, it was that little, was it a little uh, cock poodle, poodle or something? Poodle or something, because he came up to get us to throw his ball, didn't he? Yeah. So there was a little poodle just minding its own business with its owner. The owner and the poodle were just minding their own business, mm -hmm. having a little play, etc. Tell me about it, lads, are dread for, for um, the lead dogs. Yeah, magic. Uh, so the little poodle just minding its own business. Mm -hmm. the, the little poodle, even though Uber was off lead and the poodle was off lead, they just yeah. ignored each yeah. other. They were doing their own thing, which was great. And the owner was just, 
doing his ball thing. Mm-hmm. And the poodle wasn't even interested in us, was he? he just wanted us to throw his ball for him. Yeah. Remember? Uh-huh. Come up, drop the ball. <laughs> he seen me with a tennis racket. You're not joking. I'm batting Uber with a ball. Not batting Uber. I mean, I'm batting <laughs> a ball for Uber uh, and doing sendaways and stuff like that. And then he was away to get his ball. What the fuck's going on there? Oh, he wants his to go. Right, okay. So, uh, Rico just took Uber's ball and then Uber's like, that's mine and whatever. Right, so, uh, so yeah, we were batting the ball for Uber and uh, basically what happened is we had a, bat, a tennis racket and all of a sudden this yeah. poodle <laughs> ran up with his ball and dropped it in front of us if say, do us a favour mate, go and bat the ball. So we did. Mm-hmm. And it ran after it. Yep. So next minute, as we left the park, we heard all the commotion and Angela looked through the trees what we were going to use for bat training and she said there was two Boulder Terriers that were kicking off and just attacking everybody else and these were dogs that were off lead. Now, I did mention to Angela, I was down there one day working with Uba doing some dummies and stuff and these Boulder Terriers were off lead and ran into Uba and one of them gave him a wee nip, so he got a wee nip in the back of his leg. And I nearly launched this uh, Boulder Terrier into the air. And the, the person sort of looked at me funny and I went, I don't give a fuck, your dog should be on a lead. It's out of control in a public place. Mm-hmm. My dog is under control and your dog just ran over and nipped my cocker. And I think he was only about maybe five or six months at the time. And we were just doing some little dummy work with him. So, one, yeah. So, absolutely. I have this with my neighbour, Jack Russell. They won't train them, even though one went for another dog who was on lead. The dog it went for, picked it up, shook it, I killed it. So there's the consequences mm-hmm. of a dog being allowed to run into another dog, as Jane has just brought up. Dog ended up dead. So it's about us advocating and, and standing in front, and that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. There was a a thing posted a few weeks, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. It was uh, an off-lead, I think it was, a, I can't remember if it was a terrier or not, ran up, and it was a, I think it was a Dutch herder or Mali, somebody oh, posted it. Yeah. Yeah. And they were all saying, whose fault is it? Fine, the dog shouldn't be off lead, but the way the person with the, the herder handled it was quite poor, I thought, yeah. because I Put actually said that they could have stood in front of that other dog and stopped it mm-hmm. right from happening, but the the Dutchie picked it up, gave it a few shakes, then threw it away, mm-hmm. uh, and the dog ran off. And everybody's saying, well, whose fault? Yeah, well, clearly the owner of the little dog that ran up is at fault, but... What had happened was the owner of the duchy allowed the duchy to get in front of the owner, thereby the duchy taking matters into its own hands. So thereby the, the little dog ended up with a few teeth marks yeah. on it, unfortunately. That's that dog's quiet, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I heard it. Oh, that's good. Did, did you get it? No, I no. was already in the... Oh, did she oh, get you? M- I think so. Oh, that's my friend. I told you what? <laughs> My friend was saying some advice from Angela because I've said to carry a spare slip lead with her so that if I No, Anne says you won't get locked in. Oh, yeah, I know. All right. I'm quite close. But I, I, I'd have collies. What? I'd have collies but the dog across the other end of the mm-hmm. field. What? Mm-hmm. I'd have collies. I'm trying to see what's the... Alright, scroll in. How do you do it? Just will. Just okay. better your nugget. Look, watch. watch. Oh, All right, right. You do that, right. Put it oh, there. Fancy. Right, just do that with your hand. Oh. Teaching her how to use the mouse. That's a mouse. Yes, that's too much of a fancy thing to Apple, for me. Right. Uh, so who were you asking who's... Definitely Ed. Yeah, right. So oh, I, I now walk with a slip lead with advice of Angela because I was getting more and more mm. dogs running up to Bertie and it was driving me around. So like a spare lead, just in uh, case. Yeah. I told you, Angela, you wouldn't get a work done. <laughs> I knew. I knew it would happen. I'd have collies. I'd have the dog across the end of the field. Don't get that one, Kim. No. I'd have collies. The other dog, of course. The dog across the other end. That makes no sense, no. does it? I'd have collies. Kim, explain that. Uh, Louis has been bitten a few times oh, now Rolly, by... Oh, not collies. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so, I'd have collie the dog people. across the other end of the field. So, collies should be volleyed, Volied. right? But she comes from the west of right. Yeah, doing that end yeah. right. Uh, mm-hmm. Volleys not collies. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So Louis has been bitten a few times now by doodly poodly dogs. <laughs> <He's the worst laughs> We're going to see a doodle tomorrow, aren't we? <laughs> uh, 
I have no worries about popping that dog up in there and following it back to its owner. No worries at all. Yeah, yeah. So anyone who's never walked with a reactive dog probably have no idea how stressful it is for both handler and dogs. I was walking very anxious to me and I asked the off lead dog one, please can you put your dogs in a lead? The answer was, I don't bring leads. Mm, well, there's an offence if there ever was one. Uh, that's without a drink, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should ask Angela questions and give her a chance to get a word in. No. Yeah, okay, Fiona, whatever. <laughs> the lady whose dog killed the, the Jack Russell is having to go to court for dog dangerous letter control, even though it was on a lead. Mm. Ooh, well, if she so has a good solicitor, the, the dog, the Jack Russell, was dangerous letter control. If the other dog was on a lead, it's not her problem. Dog on dog, don't see why she's got to go mm. to court. Yeah. Uh, dog I should be on a lead at all times. Yeah, but that's um, probably going to get binging. Because there was, a, I was on a dog walking forum and uh, that'll probably get thrown out, Jane. Something similar. Right. Anyway, I uh, ask her a question then. Fucking answer a question. I'm getting any bother because I'm not letting you speak. Okay. Right. Ask her a question. Easy questions, please. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely ask me something. Ask Angela a question then, if you're so clever. It's just be about me, I really. It needs to be. Ask her something difficult. Bring it on. I'm just looking at all these books. You've had the input from Rob, so it should be alright. Mm. How, How are you, are you feeling? feeling? What sort of fucking question is that? Probably after coming out of the hospital. What's your favourite dog Rob said? Fucking oh, collie, don't be a collie. Dog. Yeah. Sure. Positive. Love Answer collie. it then. Uh, so yeah. Well, bearded collies now. I've always had border collies, but I have a beardy. And they're probably my favourite. Love collies. Good evening, Angela. How is one when Joy must come with Maple? Ah, it's alright. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> no, it's been been really, really good. Um, mm. when you coming home for pasta I'm making? Oh. Eh, hey, I've had dinner. <laughs> Louise, she's staying at her mum's tonight. Because she's I'm going to the beds and come along. Eh, hey, I had a massive that pizza man. That was huge. You didn't have a massive, you had one slice. Well, me and her too. <laughs> you fuckers! <laughs> I had one piece of that pizza. We had two. Neighbours are horrible. Angela, how do you like? How the fuck can they? <laughs> how the hell can they be feared for their lives? What does it mean how can they be feared for their lives? I sent the lady videos of how to do all the videos. Obviously, I'm asked to know. How do you find your training in relation to Michael's? Yeah, I'd say we're on the same path, wavelength. That's why I got in contact with Michael. Right, okay. Uh, Lewis obviously is the last to know. Did you know phone him? He came up to date. I messaged him. You're, he'll bin you. <laughs> if he wants to propose it, maybe I'll come home for pasta. How do you stay sane working with Michael? Uh, I've actually... No, I've been quite good. Quite good? I mean, you got my dog eating out of your hand, which is pretty impressive, so I can't lie. Um, what was the question about? What do you want? Hold on. Where do you guys operate from? Yeah, it's... I'm assuming you mean location, Rob. <laughs> so I'm based in Larbert, and I have a dog walking business and do dog training. But we travel to the central belt, don't we? Well, we were down okay. in Ayrshire as well. well. Yeah. So we travel, so we travel all, over all over the west, east. I could say the north as well because we're up in Sam's yeah. or up in Rosshire. So this is my working cocker. And I've got Rico. Who I'm not asking for consent, Luke. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <laughs> Did you see that woman who has to buy bottled water for her dog because it won't drink tap water? Oh fuck's sake. Right. Well, it's Larbert yeah, come yeah. for coffee. Oh, are you from Larbert? I think Fiona said that on the last. Uh, she yeah. said that on the man trailing. Yeah. Because people I've only to, been there a couple of You know, when they do the intro, they tell us where they're from. Mm -hmm. Mm. You're not far from me, Angela. Maybe I can get your dog to set up for that. Yeah? She's not dog wrapped or anything. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Angela's collie's quite good. Mm -hmm. About. Uh, Falkirk. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, uh, Angela can set your bat session up, Fiona. Mm -hmm. What's that one? Uh, Janice, can you confirm that it is the dogs that are farting? No, <laughs> you tried to blame me in the car, huh? Working Coco, Coco Spaniel based dogs ever. Rob, yeah. 
Costa. Mm, I disagree. Mm. I like Collies. Do you want to see the best dog ever? Rico! <laughs> oh. There's the best dog. Yeah. Here you go, boy. Big Roti. Hey. Lewis is dying to meet him. That's the best dog ever. Uh, he, he is Mr. Friendly. Uber, come here. And then you've got the working cocker who's on your office couch. <laughs> Let me know home. and we can. Yeah, okay. that's something to do. Right. Just go onto my, my page if you want it. It's Labra Angel Walks and I can message you. Okay. I agree with Angela Collies. Yeah. Rico. Good. Down. Love Collies. Down. We're actually maybe looking at getting another dog in the next year or so. Lewis doesn't know that yet, but. He does now. I'm needing a guard dog for the yard. We were actually speaking about this earlier, weren't we? He did yeah. say that in the car. Lewis, we were, we're actually speaking about yard, uh, yard dogs earlier because mm -hmm. that's the thing, guys. Uh, Lewis, who's Angela's partner, uh, has got his own business. It's a yard. And, and on a serious note, uh, back in the old, the good old days, because Angela was saying, Lewis, that your dad used to say you had German shepherds that used to roam freely back in the day. And uh, even your dad <laughs> said the dog would eat them. What's the page name, Angela? It's Larber Angel Walks. Right. That's my... Not by an angel, mind. Uh, so, Lewis, Angela was saying, your dad was saying that when they had yard dogs, that even the dog would chew him up. <laughs> so, those days have gone now, guys. You can't just have yard dogs wandering about protecting yards. Because uh, they can get sued. <laughs> yeah, so, believe it or not, if somebody enters your yard... Illegally as well, <laughs> and they get bitten by a dog that has no handler. Yeah, we but everyone when he was getting fed. <laughs> he ripped a guy's trouser. He told them, don't go near it, and they just ripped the arse right off the guy's trousers. So, that's why you don't have yard dogs anymore, guys, okay? <laughs> Move the mouse to see how many's on. Up in the screen, right? So 24. Like that's not bad. So, how long have we been on? Move it back in again. Uh, an hour and 24 Right, fucking hell, we're normally only on for an hour What's the time? Big shepherd called King ripped the guy's yeah, trousers yeah. off So uh, <laughs> If you have a protection trained dog A guard dog or similar That dog must have a handler And yeah. uh, you must declare it on any insurance That you have guys Because it makes any insurance you have uh, It's liable There was an article about this The box boxer attack attack and fury. Fury. Yeah, nah I wrote it for a protection dog costing over 20 grand. Was laughing so much at the comments that the pet pet's dogs would pet them without paying that sort of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, if you are putting a protection dog into a yard, it has to have a handler, guys. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you can't just let the dog roam freely uh, because if anybody gets bitten in the course of visiting your premises in... Uh, with expressed or implied permission they are there mm -hmm. as uh, part of the business thereby if your dog bites them you're liable so this is the funny bit though somebody enters your yard illegally during the night and there's a dog wandering around you can actually be sued yep. the dog has to have a handler that's why you're not allowed barbed wire fences yeah yeah so, uh, that's another thing you're not allowed barbed wire fences either because in case they hurt uh, themselves for breaking in robbers and burglars <laughs> were ripping their legs open <laughs> and then they were claiming Compensation. Mm -hmm. that, that's how the world was going mad. It's that's crazy. Not. Absolutely crazy. I think uh, somebody, was it Karen, said, am I going to Millport on Sunday? No, she's no. not. No. no. Uh, she'll be busy yeah. uh, doing other things, but we can't disclose that yet. All will be revealed. All will be revealed <laughs> next week, guys. Uh, we've got some work to do. Lewis knows what we're talking about, but yeah. he can't disclose it either. Oh, she's messaged me. Great. Uh, Thank you. I'll be in touch with you. That's ludicrous. Yeah, it is Julie. Yeah. Guard Dog Act 1975. Yeah. 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 Damn Tom. Pity. Pity that the dog. Pity that she's not coming to Millport. Nah, sorry. Hi. Hmm. How do I stop the dog trying to catch bees? Hmm. Keep it on a lead. Yeah. <laughs> Big thanks to you both. Had coffee at Family Gathering. You seen all the stuff that those people have? I'm in the loop. Ah, you're loose, <laughs> right. But you've got to keep stooping. Well because done, we can't Janet. disclose it, right? That was good. Yeah. 
We can't disclose no. anything no. yet, Lewis. Uh, so shush. Yeah, it will come apparent next week. How's the mal meant to see last week? Oh, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're still doing a bit of work with that one. Oh, good. <laughs> Aye. Yeah, yeah we're getting there. We're getting there. But uh, we'll let you know, Jane. Uh, I'm staying at my mum's tonight as well, by the way. So, (laughs) Lewis, did you know she's staying at her her mum's tonight? Mm -hmm. You go to the vets tomorrow, way it's amazing, aren't you? 550 pounds. So, Andrew's got a 550 pound bill tomorrow for Maisie. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's insured. Right, guys, any more questions for my assistant? Come on. Because. You 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 said about twenty minutes ago, right? I don't know. Uh, that I wasn't letting you speak. No. I've asked for some questions, and I've given you two short yeah, ones. You've been nice to me. They're like, how's it working with you? Well, you mean a five hundred fifty pound? I didn't say that. Go back to the premier. It's not a place for domestics. No. <laughs> uh, guys, so if you want to ask Angela some questions, feel free. Mm-hmm. When he's on. I'm happy to answer if I can. 22, there's still 22 yeah. people here. Come on, let's get some questions. I don't know on. about many people stay on this part. That's that. because I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't a nosy. Yeah. See, the, the thing is, if you'd have went home tonight, you'd have been on the other side of the screen, so th- th- there's a split screen, mm-hmm. and I could just like we should do that every blank time. you out. Oh, thanks. <laughs> what have you enjoyed learning most so far? Hmm. Just experiencing different dogs, I think, to be fair. Especially the Labrador. Yeah. That was a really... A learning curve for me, I suppose. Because I'm still learning and new to everything. So, yeah. Picking up different techniques. No, I remember the other doodle went out to... And uh, I, I said to the woman... Oh, that... Have you got a downstairs toilet? And you said, where's he yeah, going? Yeah, I had no idea. Right, and we used it as a, a mm. confined space, yeah. didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you didn't realise what we were doing. And did it work? Yeah. Because I had to think outside the box. Yeah, I was very confused when you asked that. Is that uh, so I said to this woman, she had a, a labradoodle which is barking at the door, right? Yeah. So Angela's dealing with the job. And uh, a lot of barking guys comes down to being territorial, okay? Mm-hmm. Dogs at the window, dogs barking at the door. But it's more of a territorial thing. Uh, because what we see is freedom dogs see as territory. So if you're allowing a dog to free roam within the house, it's basically patrolling and it's like, it's like territory to dog. Yeah. So generally speaking, to, to sort of stop that behaviour, what we do is we, we reduce the space and the freedom that the dog has. Mm-hmm. So what happened was uh, the, the door was going and the dog was barking, yeah? Yeah. So the woman walked out to the hallway and what the, there was a downstairs bathroom. And I said to the woman, is that a downstairs bathroom? And Angela's like, where the hell is it going with this? <laughs> And I all we did, did is we, we put the dog in a confined space yep. and the dog shut up. Mm-hmm. Even the, uh, what was her name? The woman. She was like, how the hell did you do that? Uh, Leanne. So Leanne. basically what we did is we took the dog away from being territorial and we dealt with mm-hmm. the door. And what we did is reduce the size of the room that we put the dog in. So the dog's thinking, mm-hmm. well, hold on a wee minute, what's going to... So I think we put the dog in twice. Twice it was. And brought it back out a third time. We were able to open the door and the dog just sat there mm-hmm. and everybody was like, just how the hell out. did that happen? Mm-hmm. So guys, th- this comes down to reading the dog's body language, and I I was reading the dog's body language at that time. Yeah. And I I noticed something, and uh, if you want to learn more about it, mm-hmm. join our academy. Very good. And ah. while you're while we're on the case, there's actually a free seven day trial going to happen on oh, the academy, yeah. guys. Uh free Definitely. seven day trial. Join the academy. I actually do an exercise where I reduce the space for that dog being territorial. So the video's on there. Yeah. So you can actually join the academy. Free academy uh, for seven days. There's there's a free thing at the moment for seven days. You can join. Uh, it was supposed to be set up last night. I'll double check tomorrow. But mm-hmm. certainly look on the academy. There's a seven day free trial. And uh, you get seven days to look at the videos. Yeah. There you go. And if you like to see, there's got to be more videos. But... That was one of the things I spoke about on the videos with the German Shepherds. Yeah. I reduced the size mm-hmm. and, and we were stopping and the dogs being territorial. It. And yeah. all we did was start opening the space back up for the dogs. Yeah. So, yeah. So, just things like that, just learning and understanding different techniques and body language being a big one and body movement. I really like that. How the dog yeah. understands yeah. body movement. Yeah. Stuff, so, so we, we, I 
guys that know me, I do a lot of body movement with dogs. Mm -hmm. My movement influences their movement, etc. And uh, I did some with Angela, and she was like, I've never understood it like that. So mm -hmm. my body movement influences the dog's body movement, and you need to understand that as well. Uh, so I see, is there new comments there? Did scroll yeah, up? Uh, no, yeah. Put the mouse on. Scroll up. What's been your worst? No, you've got oh, to go up the other way. Yeah. You've gone the wrong way. There we go. We'll get it. Uh, what was the last one? No, what? keep going. Who was the last one? Oh, the last. Right. Because there's more questions. I've got my glasses on. I can see right. Julie's name, but I can't see the question. She was saying that nearly my bedtime and still got to take fur baby out. Thanks for advice, mate. You said fur baby. <laughs> Julie. Tell you I'm going to batter her for she calls a dog a fur baby. It's a working Labrador. Can you send me info regarding man trailing? Who's that, Julie? Yes. Julie, look on the page. Uh, the advert advertisements are going to be on the pages the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. They'll also be publicised on Paw House page as well. So they're going to be publicised on K9, they're going to be publicised on Blaze, uh, and they're going to be publicised on Paw House, guys. So in regards to the man trailing, uh, there are now two separate pages. One which is my page and one which is Blaze, Blaze Dog uh, Training Academy page on social media. What I might do is invite you to like that page, guys, because yep. uh, that's going to be our training page, the academy page. And then Angela's got the lab that walk thing. Lab at Angel Walk. Angel yeah. Walk. So we've kept, what's happened is we made a decision a couple of weeks ago. We've kept our own pages separate. So we're keeping our own pages, i.e. Canine Psychology and Lab at Angel Walks. And on top of that, what we've done is we've set up another page which is Blaze Dog Training, so that we bring everybody yeah. in. What we'll do over time, when that gets bigger and bigger, is we will migrate everything over to that one. That is that is the intention later on down the line. Yeah. But because both of us have got our own followers and they're quite high, what we will do is start migrating them slowly over, so you'll be sent invitations to like that page. Yeah. Do us a favour, stick a like or a follow on it, and we'll build that up and build up and then what will happen further down the line the lives will come on to that page mm -hmm. and it means we'll have more and more on there plus you'll have access to all the academy features on there as well that's the intention yeah uh, we are looking at another building at the moment uh see what happens with that uh, and we'll, we'll see where we go from there mm -hmm. all right uh that that place we went to see today is really on the ball with that well there was other questions i don't know uh, what... where was it where Linda's. What's been Where's your worst case, case scenario? And then... What are you writing? Your worst case scenario so far? I would actually say it wasn't due to a dog, it was due to client. Due to client? Collie. You know who I'm going to say. I had a collie. Women? Yes. 60 year old. 60 year old woman and her son decided to buy her a border collie. Which Down. is insane in my opinion. Um, because she wasn't Ike. great mobility either. And the collie, just usual collie instincts, chasing cars, anything that moved really. Um, went out, done work with her, got videos and it was really, really great, good. And then unfortunately not stuck to the work so the dog reverted back to the same way. Is that collie not going to Aaron now? Yes, because the lady had a fall. Yeah. Due to it. So uh, that that guys, that was an example of people not following through with the instructions that they were given. Mm -hmm. Now we've got uh, Fiona Alexander on here. We've also got uh, who's the girl we went to see most for Bride? Shona. What's her name? Shona. No. For Bride. Maybe she's been on here earlier on. Susie. Susie. So we went to see Susie and Gary. Mm -hmm. What's that? Evening. Mm -hmm everyone right so we went to see Susie up in East Kilbride last week and Susie who'd actually been following us for a while has actually carried out most of the work before we got there so it was actually good to see that Susie's been following us and listening to what we've been saying on and off so what she did was put everything in place prior to us arriving so we did that Rico come here go, go on that bottle go, go on oh. <laughs> Yeah, because you take it to the Where's bin. The, bin? <laughs> the dogs are trained to take plastic bottles to the bin. So when you're drinking a bottle of water, they wait for the bottle. Then. We'll just get rid of the rotty. That's Karen. Right, so. 
Susie had done most of the work before we got there because she'd been watching us and putting a lot of work herself. All we did was have to put the finishing touches in place. So that's an example of doing the work. Mm -hmm. Where we found out that's not going according to plan is when people don't put the work in and don't put the, the effort in and the time and the consistency. We always tell people before we leave that if you don't put the time, effort and consistency in and you put the patience in, the dog is a loser, not the person. Yeah. We don't lose because we still get paid. And that's the way it generally works, okay? So you have to understand that if, if we've given you a process to follow or instructions to follow, it's there for a reason. And the reason it's there is to get you to a better place for the dog. That's the idea. And if you don't call, carry that out and follow it through, well, the dog's the loser. You have to mm -hmm. understand that, guys, all right? So as Angela said, it was the call. And you gave her all the instructions, gave her all the rundown of the process. She never followed it out. She'd done it for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And then it went to rat shit again, yeah? Yep. Yep. Um, and that, w that was what happened. Yeah, so it's failing the dog. I think, like, worst case scenarios, it's never the dog, really. It's down to the, the people yep. that have got it, in my uh, opinion. Scroll, scroll hang again as new comments come up. Uh, let's see. What we got? The dog will regress. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, guys, Gary Marriott's here, uh, and, and he's, uh, he's one of the gun dog things. It's funny that Gary's here as well, because... What we were talking about earlier on for dogs involved in dog sport and, and the post that was up the last couple of days that dogs get stressed out. Now Gary works gun dogs and Gary goes and live shoots and, and does and puts his dog through the process of gun dog work. Proper gun dog work we're talking here, not trials. What Gary does is actually take them out and properly work them in the field what those dogs were designed to do. And when I went out with, uh, with Susie soon? It's a long process, need to keep up. Yeah, so... Yep. Uh, with Gary and the rest of the guys, when I first met Gary, when I was invited up to the live shoot that he was doing with Chris up in Stonehaven and, and they got a gamekeeper up there and they were going out to catch live game for the for the gamekeeper and stuff. So we're talking partridge, uh, rabbits, etc. Okay. So the dogs were actually working in an environment which they understood and the dogs were all trained to do. Mm -hmm. Can I honestly say, even the two weekends, so I went down to Sharp the following weekend after that and the dogs were flushing and doing uh, sort of flushing and beating work to practice where they actually flush rabbits out of the, the sort of growth and stuff, yeah? And I can honestly tell you, I never saw one unhappy dog. Those dogs were thriving and doing what they were doing. So when you see posts like I posted that these clowns are saying, oh, dogs get stressed out if you use dog sports or something else, let's look at what these dogs were actually doing. Gary's Cocker, there was a Springer there, there was Labradors, all these other dogs that were doing that. Ian had a couple of uh, cockers on there as well. Uh, Chris was working them. All the guys were working spaniels and labs, right? And I never saw one unhappy dog, is Sam saying. People can't be bored, in my opinion. They just want a quick fix. It's about improving the situation for themselves yeah. and the dog. 100%. Well, this, yeah. this is the other downside of it, guys. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing a lot of as well at the moment is that, unfortunately, there's two sides of the coin, Okay. You'll have the balance at this side and you'll have the, the pure positive or alleged force free at this side. And what happens is they'll never meet in the middle, okay? So this side think this side are punishing and abusing dogs. And this side think this side are all snowflakes in doing this. Mm -hmm. I've got some very good friends who are positive trainers and they know their limitations and they will pass work this side, okay? I know guys in the balance side that will pass work down when it's easy stuff, right? But... What you get is both sides attacking. Now, we made an agreement when we put this together that we will not go attacking people. We will not go out and actually identify anybody, mm -hmm. right, and personally attack them on screen, okay, mm -hmm. unless they come after us. And by God, if they come after us, we're coming at them with both barrels, okay, because we will react. Now, what we have said is we are not interested in how you train your dogs. Mm -hmm. You do your thing. You do it your way, and if that's what works for you, fine. But put your shitty personal ethics to one side and just train the dog. Whatever you feel about the side down here, and whatever these guys feel about the side up here, just leave it alone. And that's what we've learned. What's going on, Shane? My dog's pupils dilate when they hear gunshot as they are taught that noise will lead to a positive. Yeah. I.e. a retrieve as the dog sees. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. And that's what we were talking about earlier, Gary, that obviously I trail the dogs for search work. Okay, so when we train trail the dogs for search work, 
everything's positive at the end mm -hmm. of that search as it is positive for your dogs when they go after that gunshot okay mm -hmm. but positive is the same thing that these people are on about all the time positive reinforcement positive reinforcement what are they doing your dogs when they get that rabbit or partridge or pheasant or whatever it is they go and retrieve is their positive reinforcement mm -hmm. and they get a tickle under the chin when they bring you that bird back and they get that relationship you know together and bond with you what happens is when they do the trailing for us it's either a toy which simulates a bird or a rabbit let's be honest because my cocker will search for a rabbit skin right so he will go and find somebody and then when he finds that person he either gets a rabbit skin or he gets food that's the mm -hmm. positive reinforcement yet they're on there complaining that dogs are stressed out when they're made to do dog sports what do they actually want you can't win. What, you can't win with them. That's what Angela said. So one minute, they're saying, oh, well, it has to be positive reinforcement. Well, yeah, all these dogs do dog sport and the, the, the end goal is a positive reinforcement. That's why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. You don't force them in there. Unfortunately, having had some involvement in shoots through their IPO and I saw some of the things, I wasn't overly happy, but that's a different dog sport. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about scent detection or trailing or tracking or... or fly ball or agility you think these dogs go tonto for that fly ball i'm not a great fan of fly ball i'll be mm -hmm. honest right because i have seen dogs get injured due to the strain at the hit the board etc that's fine but if people want to do that with their dogs that's their choice okay but tell me something have you ever seen a dog doing fly ball that stops in between and doesn't want to jump no because what is it at the end is that ball when it flies out of that holder yeah. and it catches it and it runs back mm -hmm. and then there's all that Delicious. cheering and everything going on and the dog's like whoa right so you know like i said fly ball isn't my personal choice however people's dogs do it and it mm -hmm. seems that they enjoy it yeah they're massively aroused by it and they enjoy it the guys that do the gun dog work their dogs massively enjoy it why because they get the positive reinforcement in it mm -hmm. my dogs do trailing because at the end of it they get that positive reinforcement and it's the same for tracking dogs that are any other dog like that. The agility, they get the toy at the end of the agility. Yeah, they love it. Right, so they do all the agility and then they get that tug mm -hmm. toy at the end. Because you see a lot of the agility people giving their dog the toy at the yeah. end of the, the agility. So tell me what's not positive about that. But they're the same people that are now complaining that dog sport stressing dogs out. But these people are quite happy to let dogs sit in the house and do absolute jack shit where they're getting stressed out anyway mm -hmm. because they're not getting to do something. And then the getting, same people that are complaining their dogs are getting ripped, uh, their houses are getting damaged and ripped to shreds. Mm -hmm. So you can't win. So th this is what always surprises me as well. And I'll say it is that you know, what's Gary saying? My dogs are taught to cope with pressure. Lots of dogs aren't, and that's where problems arise. Is they yep. can't cope with life. Yep. Same as people. Mm -hmm. So it's let's look at it from this perspective, right, guys? The one thing that keeps these people safe the, the ones that keep attacking us like us here the weed in the middle or the balance side that they say are all abusers and all the rest of it the one thing that keeps the positive only we'll say positive only or force free world the one thing that keeps them safe is the threat of punishment mm -hmm. to us that's why we don't attack them the one thing that they're against punishment and corrections is what actually keeps them safe uh, come on so that's why they slate us they, they ran mm -hmm. into us and everything else because the one thing that they're against is what keeps them safe punishment and corrections because if we attack them the consequences is that we could get arrested and we could get prosecuted and we could get fined because it's a personal attack or if we go after them and that is the one thing that keeps these people safe which is the one they're thing against. they're against. They're also against that yet they are doing that to us. Yeah. As well, by being they're hip they're, hypocritical. They're, this is how stupid it is. It's it's crackers. It really is crackers. Mm -hmm. Mentally. Look at Steve. Totally good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, a He's working cocker that's good. But I've got a roti that just wants attention. Right. Fuck off. Right, so um, right guys, any questions? Because you'll make the home. What's the time? Is it on here? What about it, is it? No. It's on there. Quarter to ten. Right. How long have we been on? One forty four. Right. We need to hit the road, guys. So any questions before we go? Um, what's the right time to do it? Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's what I was meaning. That's what I think Danny was talking about the yeah. other day.
Any questions, guys? Because we're going, we're going to cut loose because we've got stuff to do. I've got dogs to walk with. Night. Night. Oh, I'll need to check. Guys, we hope you've enjoyed the live tonight. Uh, lots of discussion things, etc., etc. So. Uh, nice to actually come on. Well, you're on every week anyway at the other end, but you just don't come on the screen. Yeah, it's nice to but it just so happens you were working with us tonight, earlier on today, and then you were here anyway, so mm -hmm. we thought, oh, fuck it. Why not? Aye. It was actually Anne that says to Angela, do you want to stay for your dinner? And Angela, being Angela, said, yeah, because <laughs> it's food for free. <laughs> of course. What was it uh, Gary said? Let them... What? Let them show their work and their dogs. I've asked a few people that... And yeah. not one has come forward by that. Uh, thanks again, guys. Have a great night. Next one, doom, doom, doom. Yeah, Sam. Great live. Thanks, guys. Lewis said enjoyed it, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Michael and Angela. Best thanks for tonight. Right, so we're going to uh, end it in a minute. Rico, move. Go. Uh, we're going to end it. We're going to cut you loose. Uh, who's Stephanie Egg? Is that one That's of you? That's my friend, yeah. You got friends? Of course. She's got friends. No, no, no. Good being able to catch you instead of working. Have a good night. You're lucky you caught us because we thought we were going to be late, mm -hmm. but we we ran we ran back. Right, guys. Good night. Thank you very much for Thank watching, you. and we'll speak to you all soon. Oh. On the train tomorrow. Off on the train tomorrow. All right. Okay.